we are, we are sitting here after the second discussion about the sh about what we call sharpening conflicts um, in Europe and uh, and in Central Europe, um, and we had a special focus today that was the Balkans. And here I'm sitting with Dr. Busek, very well known that he was. Um, uh, the Vice Chancellor of, of Austria, and he is a very well known and respected thinker and public figure, not only in Austria but all around in Europe. And um, what made he very well known first in Hungary was his uh, concern and quite well known famous book about Central Europe, which was written with, together with Emil Brix. Közép Europa. Közép Europa. Uh, Közép Európa projekt, uh, projekt Middle Europa. Right. Now, that time I was a young student and, and um, a young uh, researcher, and many of us in our circles believed that there is a chance for a strengthening cooperation. We did not know in '86, that when the book was published, that the communist system will collapse. We didn't have a faint idea that the Soviet Union is going to withdraw from Hungary and from Eastern Central Europe in 91. But there was something already in the air with Gorbachev. There was more optimism. If I may say, the arrow of time was directing towards a more positive, um, optimistic future. Whereas today, um, almost 30 years after the systemic change, the, the collapse of the Berlin Wall, etc., uh, we are sitting here with a lot of questions, more pessimism, and with, the, with a darkening horizon. Again, uh, considering the future and perspectives, and maybe um, the role of a geographic and cultural space, what we call Central Europe. So how, do you, how could you uh, interpret this trajectory from an almost hopeless but but still positive view of the world and changes to a more realistic but rather pessimistic situation during a relatively short um, period. The real reason uh, of our view to Central Europe was coming out of the East-West Division, of the Iron Curtain. Uh, and I may use a word which was created by George Conrad uh, concerning this. He said, uh, Middle Europa, Central Europe, Kaiser Europa, Stredni Europa is a meta level, uh, a meta level over the Iron Curtain. Yes. I think the ideas about what is in common in the center of Europe uh, was connecting a lot of intellectuals, artists, and so on and so on, as a vision how can we overcome the political situation. Then the downfall of the Iron Curtain came, uh, and what we had to do is a reality check. And we are in midst this reality check because, first of all, which is not yet uh, completely done, we have to relearn each other. Because by this division, I think uh, we know the map uh, and so on and so on, but even we did not know where the cities of the other side are situated. I give you a primitive example uh, coming from Vienna. A lot of Viennese were convinced that Prague is a city in the east. If you are looking to the map, it is a city more in the west than Vienna. I think here you can see this uh, difference, this distinction. Even in uh, ideological ways, in the way of thinking, uh, it was even more in distance. And then we jumped in, in the developing common Europe. And so far we had the difficulty, first of all, to say everything is in common, and now we are in the situation that nothing is in common, and we want to differentiate, and want to be in distance, and uh, want to feel, fa feel uh, fall into pieces, and so on and so on. Uh, that's a real danger of the current situation. My question to you, how comes that Western Europeans do not recognize how much Eastern Central Europeans did um, from the 50s until the end of the 80s to keep and to establish and to increase or strengthen European identity. Without uh, 53 in Poland and in East, East Berlin, 56 in Hungary and 68, etc. in Prague and Solidarność, we would not have this, what we call today, the European Union, is enlarged space. And somehow, uh, that's an interesting uh, puzzle, it did not become part 
of the and the entire European identity. I don't think that West European um, students or, or young young people understand this fact that East and Central Europeans did contribute, even even offering their lives and freedom um, for something what they called idealistically maybe Europe. It's one of the characteristics of our uh, time that we are always looking to the economic situation. Yes. And so far the impression on the Western side uh, is uh, we are living on a higher level, uh, we are richer than the others, and those who are not so rich we are looking down uh, and so on and so on, which for sure is a mistake. And you are totally right uh, that the contribution of the so-called Eastern countries, which are not really Eastern, they are Central European, uh, for uh, recreating Europe is a very big one, uh, but it's not accepted on this. It's only seen on the economic level. Uh, out of this different of the, uh, difference of the situation, uh, there were some movements. Uh, migration to get jobs, uh, to earn more money, uh, of those people coming from the East. Uh, so far, uh, by some politicians, the feeling was created they are taking our jobs, they only want our money, and so on and so on, uh, which is not a very friendly connotation, and that created uh, a certain feeling on the one side of superiority, on the other side of uh, distance, uh, let's keep them out, and so on and so on. In reality, we are depending on each other, and uh, by this exchange, a lot of things have happened. It is right that until now, we have not yet the same level in Europe. There are still differences existing, and sharpening uh, of this conflict is done that we are not only have the difference of the former East and West, but we have also differences to other parts outside of Europe, uh, which are coming here, and so on and so on. I understand uh, the refusal of the Visegrad countries concerning taking refugees, because they are saying, I think we had a lot of difficulties in the past, we are trying to keep up uh, to get standards. Why shall we share the things we don't have? We don't have any we historic responsibility, we are not so and so power. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, that's for sure. And that's not enough discussed. Yes. I think what we, we didn't uh, create uh, a kind of a European public. Yeah. I think uh, it is a real mistake that this Europe is not, by constitution, a common democracy. It is still divided. And so far, in all our elections in the different countries, uh, I think it plays a role to look to the other. What do they have? Have they more? Have they less? What are they doing? What are they not doing? Which for sure is a mistake. I think we have to create a common feeling in this context, which is not happening. That's one of the mistakes of the nation state, which is, a, for me, a kind of an outdated model. Uh, because we are so very much depending on each other. We are falling back into that. We are falling Part back. Time, uh, this is a kind of self-protection. Mm -hmm. I think there's a nice saying uh, in Vienna, uh, I think, uh, saying, uh, the others are only thinking on themselves. Only me, I'm thinking on myself. <laughs> uh, this is one of the dangerous ideas existing. Uh, that we have all the same direction considering ourselves and the others is not seen. We are only distincting with us and the others and who is better and who is more chances and what they are taking from us and so on and so on. And I think here on this we have to move. Maybe the mistake was Looking to a common Europe, uh, it was seen only too much by economy. Uh, I think not enough uh, concerning philosophy, uh, coming discussion, maybe arts and so on and so on. Here we are missing a lot and we have to do because the real challenge for the Europeans is the fact that we are only 7% of the global population. The number will go down. Uh, Economically, we are today quite strong, still 20%, but this will also shrink. And I think we have to deal with this problem. But my question to you, I completely agree with you, by the way, how to do it? Do you have any concrete suggestions for next steps? 
it's easier to formulate a long-term vision, um, although, as we said, we are not living in very optimistic times, but what should be the next practical steps? If you couldn't manage it, when the arrow of time was directing towards a positive uh, world view, uh, how to do it when we are threatened by so many existing or imagined dangers? I think on some fields we have a positive development. I may say what's happening in culture, there's a common understanding yes. and we are living on each other and uh, uh, what is coming out of qualities of the different country concerning culture is outstanding. Uh, I think it's quite uh, the same in science research and so on and so on. Here is a community developing. What is lacking behind is the political side. I think we have not really developed uh, of being together, having a real exchange and so on and so on. Uh, here I think we are occupied by the models of the past. And what we have to do is to discuss it and to do it very practically down to earth uh, to come uh, here to result. Because I think we have no alternative, otherwise I think the development in other parts of the world uh, will come over us. Uh, the refugee question, which is uh, one of the hot subjects, I think if all the refugees we might come from black Africa with mm -hmm. the high number of population, I wish you us all the best that we are able to handle it. Yes, in the 50s and the 60s we used to have a European movement. Then we had in the 70s and more, mostly in the 80s the European peace movement. Now, we don't have anything what would bind together local, um, regional and national civil societies. In the 80s, maybe it was an illusion, but many of us believe that there is a possibility for creating a European civil society. No, nobody talks about it today. Um, it, yes. it is a real question of leadership. Yes. I think what we are really missing in Europe is a kind of a leadership. Leadership concerning content. Uh, I think we are too much, uh, we have too much trust in the politicians. Uh, the characteristics of the politicians of today that they have no real leadership. Uh, they are looking from one election to the next uh, to keep their power and so on and so on. And the, on this is, there is no real exchange and no real cooperation. And I think this is the obligation um, of the social movements. I think I have a lot of hopes in this direction the social movements are creating more feeling in common. Look to the refugee question. Those who did really something, uh, that was a social movement, a so civil society, uh, considering this, discussing this, and so on and so on. And this we have to strengthen. Uh, so far, I think we have to do an important work to bring them together and not to wait for the politicians. This is really boring. If I'm saying so, and I was a politician, you know what about I'm speaking. Yes. Another topic, a big topic, I just would like to mention it, uh, <clears throat> uh, is education. We used to believe in European universities or regional universities. That would be a very obvious um, element or, or tool or means to support European identity. The simple question, why don't we have more European or regional, like Central European universities? First of all, you have to say that the university is a European invention. I think it was after the Middle Ages created, uh, yes. they had a common system, they had a common language, it was Latin at this time, and they had a huge exchange of teachers and students. Coming and going, yes. I think this is, to speak first of all about the positive sides, uh, this is uh, what Erasmus and other programs contributed. Yes. But may I say also, your activity here in Kursik is a real That's European right. contribution. That's what we are trying to do. Uh, uh, to, to build yes. up the mix, uh, uh, the meeting, uh, the exchange, and so on and so on. And I think this we have to enlarge. One of the main mistakes of the European Union, I'm a fan of the European Union, is that concerning education, there is no common European responsibility. It is still to every nation state that in this way, so it is looking like. It's not the best way. Uh, and we are hindering it's our future. Cheap. It's not. It would be relatively cheap. For sure, it would be cheaper as our system. And you don't have to annihilate national higher education. It would be a value added. I'm not talking against national universities or whatever we have uh, in different countries. But if we had, if we would have more uh, regional cross-border 
um, universities or multiversities. If you want yes. to have a good quality, and we are looking by all this ranking of your university yeah. for this. Those who are not doing international exchange, right. uh, those who are doing not cooperating, I think they are falling down. Hopeless, uh, yeah. So far from this side, it's for sure coming. Yeah. But what we have to do is to campaign on this. This is a question for leadership, as I mentioned, for intellectuals, for writers, uh, for journalists, mm. and so on and so on. That's not enough happening. Mm. I think we all have a tradition, I think, to be sad, how horrible the things are not going in the right direction. That's for sure not enough. I think what we have to do is a positive, active strength to go here in the right direction and to be outspoken on this. I think we are outspoken that everything is so bad. We are not really outspoken where it might be good if we are pushing in this direction. Well, this is what we are trying to do in small, in Kursag. Um, so please um, join us again. We continue this debate about um, new universities, future universities, we call them, during our summer university. Yes. I think uh, it's not starting always with big movements. Oh. I think you have to start maybe in a circle and then it's growing and growing and growing. And here I'm optimistic. But we are in a competition with time. It has to Absolutely. be quite quickly. We have to speed up. I think the the long durée of transition from the Cold War to a post-Cold War situation, when a new period starts in a positive way, probably is approaching. So, so you, you might wonder, I'm a fan of crisis. Uh, yes, this so, old Greek so uh, word, is, it's coming out of the Greek language, krino, that means to judge and to decide. And a crisis is a challenge to the judge and to decide. If you are able to use it in time, as you said, but the crisis, if nobody stops it, could be very But may I say, we all have a brain, we have to use it. Exactly. <laughs> well, thank you very much.